What's up guys, it's Will back again, and today we're here to review A Quiet Place Part 2, Part Dos, if you will. Honestly, I feel like there's really not too much I can say to introduce the plot of this film without spoiling it, so I'll just leave it at the Abbott family is back and they're still trying to survive, and they run into a character named Emmett, played by Killian Murphy, and they set their sights on a new objective. That's pretty much the spoiler-free basics of the plot. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I really don't want to spoil anything. With that said, I was thrilled to see A Quiet Place Part 2 in theaters because I've really missed the movie-going experience. It's obviously been a passion of mine, as you guys know, for a long time, the theater-going experience. And ever since COVID hit, not only has new content been severely delayed, but the movie-going experience has been entirely missing from our lives. That said, I think A Quiet Place 2 is an excellent choice for that theater experience because I feel like it really is one of those films that's much more enjoyable on the big screen. It's meant to be there. Mostly because the film really emphasizes the auditory experience because a big aspect of the plot is that the creatures are very sensitive to noise. So the film is very you know, heavy in terms of making you hear the danger so it feels real. Unless you have a home theater set up, you know, which most people don't, I feel like it's going to be a much more immersive experience at the theater. You also have a bit more spectacle than the first film, especially in a day one scene that actually depicts the arrival of the aliens and how disastrous that turns out to be for Earth. I think that's really the best scene of this entire film because honestly guys, it's just pure anarchy in all the best ways, making it tense and thrilling in every way you'd expect and want it to be. Judging this film as a sequel though, I think it mostly does the right things. It builds in the universe, the lore, the characters, and it provides just as much, if not more spectacle than the first. The story is fairly simplistic in that, it, you know, the characters are trying to get to X place to do Y thing. The plot occurs over the span of like a few days and it picks up right after the events of the first. For myself, I do find that this is an area I'd like to see A Quiet Place grow because I find myself connecting more so with the peril the characters are in than the characters themselves and their personalities and growth. This film is about an hour and a half long, so it is difficult to advance everyone in a meaningful way, but I don't always find myself connecting to the characters and feeling the weight of their relationships. I think the film prioritizes atmosphere over character, and it works quite well, but it's not perfect. That said, I do feel like the performances are strong. I particularly liked Killian Murphy because he feels more like a hardened survivor than the characters we know from the first film. I find that a bit more compelling because it adds credence to the idea that desperate times do create desperate survivors. And that lends itself to the post-apocalyptic atmosphere that the film focuses so heavily on. Killian Murphy's character does play a more significant role in this film than I think most will probably anticipate going in. He assists the Abbott family with a mission of theirs, and it works because it adds a more humanistic adult dynamic to the cast of characters. I would say that this works very well with the character who we most often see as the lead in this film, and that's the daughter, Reagan, played by Millicent Simmons. I think she's given much more room to shine in this one, and she uses it very effectively. She's smart, she represents the idealistic, optimistic side of humanity, which is a nice juxtaposition with Killian Murphy's character, who is more of the cynic. I think both A Quiet Place films could be categorized as both horror and sci-fi. They don't contain some of the modern horror cliches like forced jump scares, but they do contain a lot of the tension and suspense. I think this film does tension really well. There's always a sense of looming danger with the monsters because they're so incredibly formidable. They can only be weakened and then killed in one way, and that option is not available for most people in most cases. I think one of the reasons this franchise has been successful is because it's obviously not as tropey as horror movies tend to be nowadays. When you go into a horror film, they tend to sort of blend together. I mean, they all feel very similar, um, but A Quiet Place doesn't. It takes a cool premise, combines it with excellent atmosphere and tension for that matter, and you have a fun, unique feeling experience. I really have to give credit to John Krasinski for his work on this franchise because his writing and directorial work led this franchise down a very satisfying path. This IP has become something very valuable, and because of that, I think we'll be getting at least a few more films within this franchise. Another area, though, that I think this film tries to explore but doesn't quite stick the landing is the brutality of the world. There's an aspect of this film that focuses on how the humans still alive aren't worth saving. The problem is that the humans they are referring to appear as comically evil survivors that don't lend strength to the atmosphere, but rather detract from it. It's a small part of the film because they arrived for like one scene, but it just didn't look or feel genuine to me, and that was a problem. I also feel like the film really should be rated R, but I know why it isn't. 
money. Again, these are small criticisms, but I feel like the film was pulling its punches when it came to the monsters attacking people because it just felt like it, it needed to keep the violence toned down to maintain that PG-13 rating. This sucks a little bit out of the film for me because for a film that is often about survival and the brutality of a world without rules, it does pull its punches in favor of something a little more family friendly. I still really enjoy both films, but I can't help but think that they could be a little bit better with a little more brutality that better aligns the film with the atmosphere it so often you know, puts at the forefront. I like A Quiet Place 2 a little bit more than the first. I think they're both very good films, but I'm not quite as enamored by them as most. I think they're among the better horror or sci-fi films to come out in recent years, but I don't think you'd find them in my top 10 overall films of the year in a normal year. I think they'd be just outside of that. As for the pros cons though, for the pros, A Quiet Place Part 2 offers strong performances, a great sense of atmosphere, lots of thrilling intense moments, and a great new character named Emmett played by Killian Murphy. As for the cons, I think the film doesn't always nail the human slash survivor aspect and the violence, and the characters don't receive much actual growth. I'm still going to give A Quiet Place Part 2 an 8.5 out of 10, and highly recommend you check it out in theaters if you've enjoyed the first, or you're just looking for a strong theater experience. This is a very good choice. Make sure to let me know your thoughts on A Quiet Place too if you have seen it if not let me know whether you consider going back out to the theaters to see it be on the lookout for more videos from me in the future i should be able to upload more content moving forward i just want to say as always thank you for watching and i will chat with you all later this is wolf Fox vacation signing off see you in the next review